2015 Blancpain GT Series got underway, hit the road in Nagaro, southwest France on Easter weekend. Nine different manufacturers coming to the circuit Paul Armagnac to see who will come out on top. Nagaro, southwest France, but with a bullring, what better place to bring the cars, the gladiatorial machines that will fight out the honours this year, 2015, the Blancpain GT Series. Now, let's introduce the runners and riders for 2015, starting with BMW Sports Trophy Team Brazil, the 77 BMW Z4 shared by Maxime Martin and Dirk Muller. 77 and... Zero outracing for the team in the national colours of Brazil, yellow, green and blue, and how fitting it is that the Brazilian duo that share the sister car, number zero, Rodrigo Sparafico and his identical twin brother, Ricardo. We feel very comfortable and the team like our job, know what we did. So we are happy, me and my brother, to, to make part of this team, uh, our Brazilian team, the mechanics and everything, and we like the championship, so it's good to be back. Last year's champions, Belgian Audi Club Team WRT, back with four cars. Christopher Mies sharing number two with Enzo Eid. And a new face in the number one R8 is Robin Freens, Caterham Formula One reserve driver. And he's come in board this year to join Lawrence Van Tour. So uh, yeah, we're back again for, for another year and I really hope we can confirm those titles and continue our, by raising our game and, and, and showing that we are still on top of our game and, and hopefully we can be strong and, and, and fight for the championship. That's, that's the main thing. Uh, in the end, it's all, a lot of things have to fit together to be able to win a championship. So uh, I hope it's, that's the goal anyway why, why we're here. The number three entry from Team WRT is all Monegasque with a hugely experienced Le Mans winner Stefan Ortelli being joined by Stefan Richelmi, another driver across from single-seaters. The fourth car in the team shared by James Nash, a hugely experienced German Frank Stippler. With eight top drivers sharing their four cars, you feel there's going to be plenty of inter-team rivalry at Team WRT in 2015. Team WRT not the only Audi team because Phoenix Racing brought along their car for Nicky Mayer Melnov and ultra-experienced and very feisty racer, Marcus Winkelhock in the number six entry. Writer Engineering return in 2015 with one of the Lamborghini Gallardo LP560s for Dutch racy Nick Katzberg and for German aristocrat Albert von Turn and Taxis trying to take the battle to the Audis and the BMWs. Lamborghini's going really well. Um, we've got a couple of issues with the grip level, got some pickup problems at the moment, but I'm quite confident that we'll have that figured out till tomorrow. Attempto Racing are joining the Blancpain Sprint Series with two of the new McLaren 650Ss for Yoshiharu Nori and Philippe Vlasic, who will be running in the Pro-Am Cup, and then the hugely experienced McLaren favoured duo of Rob Bell, who will be sharing the car with Kevin Estra. I think the McLaren is going pretty well. Um, McLaren seems to like this track. Uh, it was every time fast, so we'll see now with the 650, but I think we have a good chance. We have a great team and a, and a good driver lineup, so let's see, but I, I think I'm pretty confident. There's more chassis variety with the GT Russian team bringing a pair of the Mercedes SLS AMGs for Alexei Vasiliev, who will be sharing with the former Le Mans winner Christophe Bouchou in the number 71. SLS AMG. 
The sister car will be driven by Russian racer Alexei Karachev, and his co-driver is none other than Mercedes GT racing superstar Bernd Schneider. I think um, uh, it will be a tough weekend for us. Um, the circuit doesn't suit very good to the SLS. But uh, we will give our best and we're pushing hard. Um, hopefully we find the right setup. Uh, so far we are a bit struggling with that as well. And then we will see how the race will go. MRS GT Racing are bringing one of the mighty GTR Nismos to the show for Craig Dolby, a convert from single-seater racing. And he'll be sharing this year with Sean Walkinshaw, son of Tom. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be an amazing weekend. You know, we uh, haven't done very much testing, but all the testing that we've done so far has been really, really good. We've made good progress every time we've been out in the car, and so far after the first practice, it's going quite well, and it should be a positive weekend. ISR Racing bring a pair of R8s this year for the Fjordback brothers, Thomas and Anders, in car number 74. And the sister car, number 75, will be driven this year by the pairing of Philippe Salacada and Marco Bonanomi seem to have good chemistry already. So here's another strong lineup who can perhaps take the battle to Team WRT in the battle to be top for Audi. There's been a big change at HTP Motorsport for this year, and they've changed from running Mercedes to Bentley Continentals with a young lineup of Olivier Lombard and Jules Simkoviak in one of their cars and the sister car driven by young French drape racer Vincent Abril who is paired with German star Maxi Buch, so strong in a Mercedes last year. I think this year should be quite fine for us because we have a good base, we have a good balance in the car. Uh, we were testing quite a lot, so we have a good experience with the car and I think it should be an interesting season. Uh, I think we can compete with all, all of the other cars uh, on every track, so it should be fine. The lone Ferrari in the sprint series this year is entered by Rinaldi Racing with Marco Seafried bringing great experience along with teammate Norbert Seidler in the green 333. Oh, it's nice to be a part of the championship and together with Ferrari, Rinaldi Racing and Marco uh, I think we can uh, do a good job for the, all the season and I think at the end we are in the top three of the championship. It's good to see Porsche here this year with Fach Autotech with uh, Porsche approved driver Martin Ragginger, no stranger to the 911, who's sharing this year with Marcel Wagner. We decided to um, attend with the Porsche in the GT series and hope we are able to win uh, the Pro AM category. And yeah, let's see. <laughs> we will do our best. So the sun is shining at the circuit Paul Armagnac for the opening round here at Nagaro of the 2015 Blanc Pain Sprint Series. Looking great, John. Yes, I have to say, Easter Sunday here in Nagaro is a beautiful day. As we see the tail of the grid, this is at the exit of turn 14. And uh, as usual, Easter Sunday here, the crowds are piling in. Crowd piling in, the wind is blowing in their faces if they're looking down from on top of the, uh, grand, uh, the grandstand above the pitch. You can see the flags from the front shot. It's a busy, windy day, but I think we're in for a cracker of a qualifying race. Well, I think we've got a very interesting grid because, well, unsurprisingly, let's say that we've got an Audi and pole position, but not necessarily the Audi we anticipated. That's a little bit of a story for later on. But the, the real, the, the car driver pairing, I think, is going to be the one that's got to be Really the car to watch throughout the race is Maxime Martin and Dirk Mahler in the BMW Sports Trophy Team Brazil car on the front row alongside only hundreds of seconds between first and second on the grid. Yeah, we came into this meeting expecting that Audi would continue its very strong form with uh, the, the Belgian Audi Club Team WRT. You did tip, John, bless you, uh, the BMW Sports Trophy Brazil entry. You did pick Maxime. Martin and Dirk Muller, but their sister car, number zero, has been put to the back of the grid. It qualified 13th in uh, time qualifying this morning. That's been moved to the back, but uh, that could add to the excitement of the racing. But tell us why one of the cars is missing, number well, one. Well, the, the car that really everybody expected to be on pole, probably win the race, Laurens van Thor and Robin Friens, number one IDWRT. In this morning's warm-up, Robin Friens came out of turn 14. The back end of the car got away. He had a long looping spin, and he sort of tank slapped the barriers 
which led to the left front suspension mounting point on the chassis being punctured. That chassis is now never going to be used again. What is sad about all this is the chassis that had this accident this morning was the very same chassis that won Spa 24 hours last year and the team are heartbroken about it. But it's on its way back to Belgium. It'll be back there on Tuesday and uh, they'll be at Monza next weekend. Well, just looking down the grid, there's the second row of Bentley and an Audi. Third row, we've got Craig Dolby, Sean Walkinshaw, Marcus Finkelhock and uh, Nicky Mayer manhoff Then more Audis, plenty of Audis in the field. Eden Mies and then Simkoviak, young Simkoviak from F3 in the second Bentley. Porsches with Raginger and Wagner, Nicky Katzberg bringing up the end of the top ten in the Lamborghini. So nine different makes of car here this weekend. Yes, I mean, the, the one difference we've seen over the weekend is today, right now, as we're just coming up to ten past two in the afternoon, it is much warmer, albeit with a breeze blowing, but the sun's out in the sky, we've got a blue sky, track temperature going to rise, that's going to help a lot of drivers who struggled this morning in that warm-up when it was much, much colder. On top of which, the warm-up, the, the qualifying, uh, time qualifying this morning was interrupted by the accident so it's stop start for a lot of the drivers this is their chance to get a longer run and really see what they can do but uh, looking at the front we've got Stefan Ortelli starting on pole position in the number three Audi and the number 77 BMW alongside with Dirk Muller taking the start yeah on the second row of the grid we've got Maximilian Book in the Bentley on a track which they thought may not necessarily play to the car's strengths but one thing is clear that Bentley have got a lot of straight line performance and off this rolling start into turns one, two, three, four. I can't expect too much to happen, but certainly out of turn six onto the back straight, watch that Bentley. It's got the horsepower to just drive past the two front row position sitters. But one other car in the pack that could be surprised is behind the Bentley, and it's the, the Nissan with uh, Craig Dolby on board to take the start. Now here we go through the final sequence of corners, turn 13, turns to turn 14. There is a start finish straight for the opening race of the season the red lights are on on the gantry who's going to lead down into turn one the dust is kicked up and the audi takes the lead from pole position very tight in behind but it looks as though the bmw will stay in second position challenged around the outside by the second of the audis of frank stippler but what you know oh, a spin there for for oh, a lot, oh, of, lot of contact down at turn one into turn two up the bentley 84 that started with maxi boot from third position had a look to go in second place the sister car for Jules Simkoviak is parked, beached in the gravel. I expect we'll see the safety car coming out. The driver who didn't get it wrong at the start was Stefan Artelli. He took the lead, wasn't quite challenged by those behind who were fighting, and we had five or six cars going round. So 77 in second place with Dirk Muller on the back straight, and then it should be number four, Frank Stippler, chasing down in third. Down to the end of the back straight, and we have more spinners. That's the Phoenix uh, Audi so absolutely action-packed that was down in the first couple of corners so that's just recovering but what you do need to know is Stefan Ortelli is leading for Audi Dirk Muller chasing hard for BMW yes and it should have been Book but Book was turned around in turn two and that then took out the sister car so really both Bentleys out in the first 300 meters of this race great disappointment for what we had anticipated to be a great race in the front of the field Still a great race going on here in the opening lap with Frank Stipper trying to chase down Dirk Muller in the second place BMW well, the driver making the charge at the moment is Frank Stippler in the... Oh, a lot of bodywork damage for the lead uh, McLaren. Not as it should be. That's the number 55 entry driven from by Kevin Estra. But the leader of the race is still Stefan Ortelli as he goes onto the second lap, chased by Dirk Muller and Frank Stippler very close behind in third place. They've already made a break. Three seconds clear of the rest. And uh, one of the... Mercedes. Mercedes, that's the GT Russian time. It's not this, the yellow car, which you can see on the screen. It's the 71, which was started by Christophe Bouchou. So French home luck not coming his way. Limps into the pits. Well, we've got a yellow flag around. Turns one, two, three, and four. And is this... Oh, this obviously, you can't overtake under the yellow flag, and that's not really... Ideally to do, that's on board with the McLaren, that's Kevin Estra trying to make a move. Uh, strange, strange place to do it because we've got a yellow flag pretty much all around the racetrack. And that's, still the, that's the battle for fourth place. As you can see, they're already a long way behind the first trio chasing after Frank Stippler. But the first three looking good and certainly looking awful, but going very effectively is Kevin Estra. Still 57 minutes to go in this race, but they're fighting Captain this And this as well now. So that's... That's Craig Dolby in from, well, he was about fifth or sixth, but he was one of many cars caught up on that opening lap. Uh, Fracar down as turn one, fed to turn two. So, still St. Kevin Estra pushing very hard, chasing down Nicky Katzberg as they come down into the sequence of corners, which brings us back onto the original start, finish straight through turn 12. 
This is the corner. Kevin Estra, who really was a star in the McLaren back in 2013 at the first race we had in Baku in Azerbaijan, and has suddenly elevated himself into the very privileged position of being one of the world stars in GT racing. Well, he started down in about 14th or 15th place, and the fact he's challenging for fourth now shows what an incredible lap, but you can see the battle scars. Oh, very bent tail there on the uh, Nissan 73. Craig Dolby's race, an incredibly short one, effectively over by turn two. Well, the two Bentleys, they were tagged. One of the Ardys was tagged. Now we see the Nissan, and of course the damage to this car we're on board with. Kevin Estra again running really close in turn four to the back of the Lamborghini Gallardo driven by Nicky Katzberg. Estra goes the high road, but really he's got little chance. He's got to get back in behind the Lamborghini as he comes now into turn six and hope he can pick up. But, but look, what we need to see though is Frank Stipper has got right on the tail of Dirk Muller in that battle for second. Having a look, a dummy look down to the inside, but he's just letting Muller know he's there. And then the battle behind them, very close indeed. And I think uh, maybe Kevin Estra will be able to make a move this time, but then he'll have the full air on the front of his car, he's still in fifth place, but his body, his lack of bodywork is well, really going to hurt. Absolutely, the lack of bodywork is doing a, a pretty poor job in terms of the aerodynamic slipperiness of the car. On the other hand, he actually might be picking up at a downforce because it's so draggy in the corners, it might be giving him some more front-end bite. Yeah, well, he's sitting, he couldn't be more in the slipstream of the Lamborghini there. He's still teasing him, he's still looking at the outside the whole time. Now, which of these cars qualified better? The Lamborghini did. Does that mean it has better handling? We don't know, because it was so interrupted in qualifying this morning. I think, in fairness, the, the McLaren is capable of lapping quicker in the lap. What it hasn't got is the pace where it counts, which is going to be in the faster parts of the racetrack, particularly down the main back straight, where all that aero damage to the car will be acting as like a huge windbreak. Let's have a look and see at the start again. Well, it all is clear for the pole sitter. It looks fairly good for the yellow BMW behind. Come car 77, all fine so far. A couple of Audis challenging. We've got through turn one. Turn two, though, not such a pretty story. So, yeah, so Winklehock spun. You can see the you can see the front. Poor old uh, Maxi Book tagged and spun round. You can see the McLaren Kevin Estra riding on board though with the Bentley. And this is Book's car. Yeah, I mean Book's in place. He's coming up the inside. Unfortunately as they got into turn two, back to this battle for fourth place, and he's now got ahead. Kevin Estra's done the business, but he's having to defend aggressively. That is a, that's probably a move that will get the attention of the stewards because he forced the Lamborghini out to the right. Lamborghini's got through again, so he has conceded, but he's trying to come back up the inside as they go to turn eight. Made for TV, but that certainly was a very, very robust piece of action there, and uh, wasn't his fault on the opening that, Kevin Estra, but I'd say that was a... <laughs> <laughs> Albert von Turner Taxis isn't sure where to look, but and I that, guess he's... And, and it takes a lot for him to blow his cheeks, I can tell you. And now, so who's who's in behind them? That's the question. The, the Fjordback brothers are up into running in sixth place, so they've done well to come up the grid. But the battle for the lead is a 2.2 second between that man there, Stefan Ortelli, and still being chased by uh, Dirk Muller, and still with Stippler in third third place but it's the battle from fourth place back that's providing all the incidents at the moment I mean I thought we did incident enough at the opening lap in this corner there is one of the Bentleys being again I mean there's a yellow flag situation up at that part of the racetrack but uh, the gap between second and third place Frank Stippler dropping back a little bit usual story you run continually in the, the under the rear wing of the car you're chasing down you end up running at their pace and we see the battle further back well Kevin Estra's really managed to make a break yes. ahead of um, Katzberg the ACA Katzberg back. Lamborghini and in turn he's holding back the fjord back entry number 74 now look here's Maxi Book again having a look at the start it all looks fine from this point of view there'll be an Audi coming to the outside you'll see any second now which is Frank Stippler Frank Stippler goes past him Book's over the curbs on the inside all looking fine and then wait for the clout bang there it comes hit and round from, by, yeah, Marcus by Winkelhock Winkelhock. then he gets it by it's the like Nissan a, it's like a game of snooker it's, it's pinball stuff so back to live action again up at turn two well, the Ferrari's going very well with uh, Norbert Seidler looking to get past uh, Fjordback. You'd expect it in terms of driver experience, many, many years under the belt for, for Norbert Seidler. But uh, Fjordback driving very well in that number 74. I mean, in a sense, the beneficiary of the, 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 the confusion, the chaos, a turn two in the opening lap. Some got through because they happened to be on the clear side of the track. And that's the case right now with, the, uh, with that particular ride and doing a good job in sixth place. And not all the cars that uh, were involved in that, that crash have actually stopped because Christophe Bouchou, we saw him come in about three or four laps ago. He's made his pit stop. He's the last of the runners in 15th place. But Somebody pop one of those uh, little poles. Marker pole. Yes, he gets popped and it's thrown across the track. 
on the exit of turn 14. And they were put there to encourage the drivers not to hit them, but that's just taking it one little shade too far. So that's the Sovereign Bank entry, that's number 333. There it is, looking to see if there's any damage. That's it out on the track, and that was uh, teammate to Norbert Seedler. That was Marco Seedfree looking on from the pits. Yeah, I think what happens with the, the front splitters in these cars, they're slightly more prominent than the bodywork, and it acts like a scythe. And if it just caught that marker post at the vulnerable part, and they are flexible rubber, it just cut through it, and um, that's one done and one remaining in that exit of turn 14. Yeah, just looking there, John, to see at the end of the back straight if there was any damage. Couldn't pick any out, but uh, here's a replay of where it went wrong. You do not drive over the kerbs all the way along. And if you do, well, red stick. Yep, yeah, there it goes. Now, what was that? The Ferrari. It was the Ferrari, in effect. That there was a little bit of bodywork, didn't it? There was, actually. Fall down came just there. So there's maybe a minute amount of on the right front of the Ferrari. Well, he's Difficult still running around it, still running in seventh place. You know what, he's just set the fastest second sector of all, so... That's the battle for second place with Stipler. How's the McLaren doing? Is that closing in? Let's see, he's lapping last time, 128.044, ahead of, uh, faster than the two cars ahead of him. So, a yeah. great performance from the aerodynamically modified Yeah, McLaren I mean, substantially there. modified. The only car that's running quicker than that is the lead car of Stefano Telli. But uh, Kevin Estra in uh, currently in fourth place, what five seconds uh, approximately behind uh, second, third place Frank Stippler. It's going to be difficult to run that down, and he's running about maybe two thirds or to half a second a lap on average quicker than the third place Stippler Audi. So there's plenty of time, but whether he can maintain that pace or whether there'll be further degradation to the already damaged bodywork on the McLaren, because. Well, here's a question for you then, John. Is he going to be underweight when he gets to the end of the race? So, the 74 Audi is he's losing a lot of yeah, ground now. He's because he's falling back behind the, the Ferrari coming through. It's going to be the switch back. No, not able to make it. But just coming back to the McLaren with the, the injured McLaren, the wounded McLaren that's running in fourth place, he's lost a lot of bodywork. How much variation are you allowed at the end of the race? Because obviously you've lost a bit of weight that should be on the car. In this instance, I would think if there was a, an issue of, of actual weight or being marginally underweight, I think that the team could rightly say force majeure. It was not something that was deliberate, it was an incident. The cause of the incident was not necessarily our fault. So I would think that the, the advantage is offset by the disadvantages in terms of the straight line speed of the McLaren as a result of almost like a barn door now. You've just got a, the entire boot space of the McLaren exposed to the, to the wind as they come down the main straight on board again. Uh, book's got yeah. So. Uh, Book has got going again, that's the 84 Bentley we're looking at, and he's having a good old tussle with uh, Rodrigo Sparafico, who started the Zero uh, BMW. He was put to the back of the grid, but he's gained a few places, but uh, clearly we've seen already the speed the 84 Bentley has, a very strong pairing with Vincent Ibril. But Maxi Book, we've seen his, his ability in the last couple of years in the Mercedes, but he's really making this Bentley go, and he was so innocent in that second corner shunt. Yes, he was. He was simply there and just got carried, taken away by an over-ambitious move by Marcus Winkelhock. Here is where the Bentley ought to have an advantage. We know the BMW is a high downforce kind of car, whereas the Bentley might have a little bit more straight line speed. Another move down the inside, the Audi and the Ferrari. The Ferrari, this time, well, again, it's side by side. The Ferrari just, just edges it into turn eight. I must say, I'm impressed with the Fjordbacks. They're very short on racing experience, but he's mixing it with the big boys and not looking terribly out of place at all. Main thing is they're avoiding making contact, and uh, that sounds simple. But when you're committed and you're making a, a lunge down the inside into turn seven at the end of the main straight, it is easy for contact to arise. And the sister car, the second ISR racing Audi, being pushed hard by 911 with uh, Martin Raginger. And certainly that's going to be a good little battle. Filling the mirrors of car number 70, which is obviously the yellow GT Russian team entry with Alexei Karachev. He doesn't have their experience, so they should fancy their chances. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be about just getting position. And the Mercedes is dictating the pace of these three cars running behind. Then this battle with Spirifico and uh, Max Book. So they're bringing themselves, dragging themselves up to the tail of these three cars directly ahead of them, which in turn effectively will slow the whole line of cars down, because as long as the, uh, the, the lead car of these three is able to maintain, the Mercedes is able to hold that little bit of advantage where it counts, then that's always the issue and problem of getting into a group of cars and losing your momentum. Book looking to go around, the long way around, but 
All he can try to do is drop down, get the acceleration off the corner, and uh, again, look for something done at the end of the straight, as we see well, again. Well, I think Maxi, really Maxi Boot does appear to be getting that little bit closer as he goes down the back straight just behind this group. You can see he's not quite close enough as they go into turn seven to make a move on Rodrigo Sparafico, but he's getting, he's getting closer and closer. But how many places around the lap would you say are serious overtaking opportunities? At the end of the straight is one. There are a couple of chances around here. You've got to be a bit muscular about doing it through turns nine, 10, and down into 11. You can do it, but you've got to be absolutely alongside the car before you make the entry into the corner. And of course, that then is uh, determined to some degree by the momentum that you can carry forward. So running closely like this most often does not do very much to improve your chances. Nicky Katzberg still in fifth place. But interestingly, the car behind the 333 Ferrari, the green one, you've just seen fastest Again. second sector of all. Yep. Don't forget he's been bottled up behind the Fjordback uh, Audi for a bit. Now he's got clear air. Let's see what he can do. Gap between first and second. Ortelli extends it. 5.1 seconds clear now. The bright yellow Mercedes, that is sitting down in ninth place. So Karachev actually not doing too badly, but he's going to have a monstrous few laps over the next yeah, I mean, handful of What tours. he's done that's very good is so far managed to resist the attention of those behind. He has not apparently, or not seen him so far, make any fundamental what you might describe as driving errors that would allow one of these two cars to get the momentum and take the run uh, down here, particularly coming down the back straight into turn seven. So he's doing what he's required to do. He will hand that car over to Bernd Schneider, who undoubtedly will uh, give it a, an enhanced performance. Talking of turn seven, it looks like an overtaker's ragging. It goes down the outside of Fjord back. Hasn't quite got enough, but if he hangs in there, he could just get it as we go to turn eight. No, he hasn't. Fjord back again. I am impressed. Yeah, good job. And he managed to keep the Porsche on the outside. Porsche now almost shoveling his almost nose under the back of the Audi, forcing it through turns nine, ten, and into turn 11. As we go back to race leader Rotelli, second place BMW Dirk Müller, third place Frank Stippler, and then we're waiting for the gap between Stippler and Kevin Estra. It was the last time through, it was, well, it's 4.1 seconds. He's pulled back in about the last three laps, the best part of a second. It's still a, a long gap in terms of laps. We've got the pit lane will be opening in another nine minutes or so. So will Estra take the opportunity to come in early, check for any damage and make the driver change and hand over to Rob Bell or will he hang it out? There's a question. Would a French driver doing well at home like to stay on for as long as possible or not? It, it really depends on the condition of the car because also what we don't know is, is this having an effect with a lack of downforce in the front of the car or maybe a lot more downforce in the front of the car on uh, the front tyres. Ortelli, 5.4 seconds clear, almost precisely one, one second. And there was, oh my God, right in the thick of the battle is the 911, 911. But the back of that group, it, he can't be there for much longer, is uh, Maxi Buch down in 13th place. Innocent bystander with turn two on lap one, and now he's just having to fight his heart out. He's in the background of that long shot, you can see, and, the, and making another move, this time trying to go down the inside. Martin Raginger, it's not going to work, but it's delaying both of them, and this should leave the duo behind a chance to catch up. But in fact, what we really need is for Africo to be passed by Maxi Buch at the, in the Bentley, because I'm sure he's got that bit more speed. Yes, yeah, he, he's got the lap time, but he hasn't got the speed where he needs it. Normally, and you'll have to say BMW's straight line performance is at the lower end of the speed range. The Bentley is always at the higher end of the speed range, but right now we're seeing the Bentley and the BMW running more or less at sort of 245, 250 kilometers per hour at the end of the straight. But what we've now got is in effect of what was a three car battle at the tail of the field now about to become a four car battle. The Porsche again, looking like it's capable of running slightly quicker than the Audi. But I have to say the four Fjordback brothers are doing a great job and uh, they're not making any mistakes and not, you know, as you might expect, in pressure to be getting you know, body contact, making errors. Third place Stippler closing He's, down Dirk Muller. Yeah, he took, he took over four tenths of a second out of him last time around. It looks slightly greater as Muller takes turn seven there in, in the yellow 77 BMW, doing a great job for the BMW Sports Trophy Team Brazil, but uh, Frank Stippler really, really fancies his chances. And in the, in the warmer weather we've got for this qualifying race than we had this morning, this morning we had the Audis twitching everywhere, a car that really, as you said, John, very nervous, but because it's such a racing car, but it seems much more planted in this race. I think I think everybody's benefiting from the temperature again, back to this battle with the Porsche, uh, the Audi and the Mercedes, and uh, slowly, slowly, the second of the Brazil BMWs and the, the Bentley are closing in.
But basically, the warmer temperatures are making it an easier afternoon than we saw this morning, where Audis in particular were affected by cold track, cold tyre temperatures, the rear tyre in particular being the offender. So the balance swung slightly back towards uh, that driver's teammate. That was Maxime Martin, held it, helmeting up, but uh, putting his balaclava on. But uh, Dirk Muller, his teammate in the 77 BMW, just edged slightly further clear again last yeah. time. And Martin getting ready. There's another six minutes before the pit lane window opens, but he will be ready in the event. That Dirk Muller does opt to make an early stop. We never know what the teams are opting to do. Uh, Maxime Martin, of course, so skilled in these form of this form of GT3 racing and uh, in a BMW is going to be a real threat and if they come in early in a clear track and the, more importantly where do they slot in when they return to track if they can get into clear air and maximize the best of the car the best of the tires that could be a smart move for Maxime Martin and for the Brazil BMW team. Be interesting to see if Frank Stippler's teammate uh, hoping to take over the third place Audi. James Nash is already suited and booted and ready to go. Now, finally, is this a chance for Maxi Boot to pass the BMW number zero? No, because zero was holding position. He's totally entitled to do so. So now the frustration for Maxi Boot must really, really be mounted. Well, there certainly couldn't have got any higher than it would have been at the opening lap in turn two where he got tagged by Marcus Winkelhock. But he's worked his way up through the field. He's got stalled out behind. The Sperafico brothers BMW, who in turn were probably because they started at the tail of the field, uh, they're just working their way through. Whereas the frustration you can imagine from Max Book, who is accustomed to winning, being in a Mercedes Benz, waiting yet for his first victory to come for Bentley, which no doubt will happen at some stage. If not later, it'll be sooner. Yes, because the car looked very strong in time qualifying this morning, running 13th points for this qualifying race, only down to sixth place. 8, 6, 4, 3, 2, 1. Porsche's got clear of the Audi, so that's a pass that we didn't catch, and it's now directly behind what is the... That's ninth place, the ninth place Mercedes-Benz, yep. so Raginger is looking to make the move. wonder where he got behind it, got around the Audi. We didn't have that tune. We may be able to see it on a replay, but the Porsche clearly, and Raginger in particular, has got momentum and uh, an opportunity for the flat six water-cooled engine from Stuttgart to, ooh, and the flat six so V8, I was getting distracted the V8 <laughs> Fair from enough, Tom. Stuttgart, here we go side by side, Porsche power versus Mercedes-Benz power, and it looks to me like Porsche power is at all over, done and dusted, pretty comfortably indeed, Porsche this time gets ahead of Mercedes and he's been spending all these laps since the race began trying to get ahead of the Audi and in the space of one lap gets ahead of the Audi eventually and also the Mercedes. I wonder how much Alexei Karachev, you know, he's very inexperienced relative to those around him, is starting to feel the pressure there in that yellow Mercedes. Nearly up to pit stop time, and I think the 70 Mercedes will be in quite soon. I think he'll be the front end of the pit stop well, window. It, it well, he would if your teammate is who he is. Yeah, but also there's, there's been a lot of pressure on somebody who's in relative terms inexperienced, and you know, you hold on, you hold on, you hold on, and then eventually just, you know, the, 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 the pressure and also principally because it took Raginger to get ahead of the, the, the Audi to apply. Now we're getting seen side by side up into turn one and two. Max Book and Sperafico side by side. He's done it finally coming out of turn 14, got the run and got ahead of the Brazil BMW. So in, in half a lap, it's all changed in that five car battle. Already Raginger pulling clear of the Mercedes. Another mistake from Karachev there. Now he's under big pressure from uh, 75, which is Salicada. I suspect, I suspect. The Mercedes is struggling a little bit with overall grip. Max Book sees the opportunity to get past. So we're going to see this is coming out of turn 14, gets the run, gets up, and he gets into position coming up into turn one very late in the break. So you've got to give them a dab as you turn in, but he's got the corner and he's able to hold it as the car then made the cut back to. And again, there's the battle for Mercedes just beginning to fall back. As we sort of rather suspected yeah, he would. Is. So another I suspect, suspect he's running out of just running out of. Well, certainly grip. But uh, not a bad opening opening performance for 2015 for Alexei Karachev. But uh, the, the might of Maxi Buk in the Bentley clearly showing. And now he's chasing after 75. Philippe Salicardo in the one of the two ISR racing Audi R8 LMS Ultras. Over the curbs, past the old pits, coming down to complete another lap. But the Porsche that had been in that group 
He's just pulling clear, dropping well, them. He, he got, he broke the toe. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, he, he got the Porsche got locked into that melee up and turn two at the beginning of the race. So now he's driven his way through the field, is able to use the performance the Porsche has got. He's got a 2.5 second advantage over uh, Felipe Salacuada in 10th place in the Audi. So on board with the Bentley, and that's what you see through turns two. So he struggled for a long, long time behind the Sperifico driven BMW now behind the Audi. That's got good straight line speed, so it's not going to be an easy pass, but it's all about getting off the corner. It's can you get your power down? Have you got the traction left in the rear tires? The Audi accelerates a little bit sooner. That's why the gap just suddenly opens up. So it's a bit of a gap between ninth and 10th place. And uh, there's no difference in overall power between these two cars. Totally different shapes, totally different. Uh, almost what well, the fact they probably actually share a very similar engine because Bentley is now owned by VW Audi and the V8 has got a lineage through to the Audi, but the Audi's got a V10. But that's part, the of, the, that's part of the beauty of uh, the Blancpain series is the fact that here we have Baxi Boot fighting his way up the order, but each car he gets behind is a different make of car than the one he's had on the previous few laps. He's fought past a BMW, he's fought past a Mercedes, now he's on the tail of an Audi. His well, next target, of course, would be a for, uh, Porsche. He's had to fight past Audi many, many times when he was driving in the Mercedes-Benz, so he knows the strengths of an Audi, certainly around this circuit, and he's getting to grips with the performance of the Bentley. And now coming through turn 14, this is where he made that move quick through turn 14, but not close enough. It shows the nose, but not close enough to do anything about the Audi as it comes into turn one. As you would, but all the team managers would have kept the drivers informed that uh, next time they come around, the pit stop window will be open. Now, who has been suffering in traffic and wants to come in? Who will stay out? I think Maxi Boot will stay out. He will stay out, and the reason I think he'll stay out is because watching the Bentley, it has got more fundamental grip. Uh, certainly through the slower part of the racetrack through one, two, three and four. He's able to choose his line and hold that line, whereas the Audi directly ahead of him is struggling. A you know, trying to get the car to turn the nose in as we go back. And this is our race leader. Yeah, quietly Six pulling. 6.7 seconds. Edging, edging clear of uh, Dirk Muller's BMW. His first chance to pit, but of course you wouldn't expect him to do so. So Stefan Ortelli continues for another lap. Dirk Muller, I don't expect him to come in this time around unless he's fed up of being pushed so hard by Frank Stippler. He's coming but he in. does, he does come in. Well, I think the BMW, but seeing Maxime Martin getting dressed as early as we did was a bit of a clue that they might want to bring the BMW in relatively early. Again, it's about when you come in, you make your driver change, but it's getting back out. And when you go back out, are you going to go back out in the middle of traffic? That's what strategists are in these teams to sort of work out. It's not quite as sophisticated as a Grand Prix, but nonetheless, you can still do your calculations. And if you have a normal pit stop, you get wheels on, off the jacks, and then back out. So we've got Bentley coming in as well, well behind Salah Carter. We, yeah, so Salah Carter and Boot coming in. We've seen the number two Audi come in as well, Enzo Eid coming into the pits. So who's going to be fastest? The real key is that uh, Audi versus Bentley pit stop. And Mac Maxi Boot could be handing over to Vincent Abril, desperate to do well at home. Yes, and of course he's got his mentor here this weekend, Olivier Pantis, who sort of manages and guides him through his career. I think Audi had anticipated Vincent Abril being a part of the WRT team this year. He was a junior driver last year, and the Audi is on its way. Oh, that's another idea. No, that that's was the number two Audi that came yeah. in just ahead of them. Yeah. So that's, there's the number two Audi rejoining from the pits. Stefan Ortelli underway from our end of the pit lane beneath our commentary box is Vincent Abril, but he hasn't got ahead. Marco Bonanomi has just pulled out ahead of him. It was Been that good, tight coming in. Good it, teamwork from both the Audi and the Bentley teams. No benefit, no gain one way or the other. So now, who's coming around the track before they come back out? Now they've managed to get clear track to go out. So I think Vincent Abril was a little bit slower slow getting out of that pit lane. Many allowed. Uh, and Bert Schneider is coming out in their wake as well. He's taken over from Alexei Karachev in the yellow number 70. There he is, just leading that duo around. To Kevin Estra, still running in third place. Of course, that's the position that uh, the second of the BMW, the first of the BMWs have made his pit stop, so that's not really an overtake on the track. Lots of rubber on the main straight, a little bit of bodywork probably as well from the, the contacts that have occurred either side by side on the main straight. As we see, Stefano Telli, merry, merry way, 8.6 seconds ahead of second RDWRT of Frank Stippler, who's a further three seconds ahead. And Kevin Estra's bit by bit, it's only been 
fractions of seconds every lap and he's taken a couple tenths here three tenths there out of that second place advantage that Frank Stippler has got second BMW in yeah that's the, that's the zero one so we're losing Rodrigo Sparafico and getting his identical twin brother Ricardo take here but he's been in the thick of the battle the only car that really has has been out on its own is the number three Stefan Ortelli it led away from pole position the gap, as you said, 8.6 seconds, and he's going around for another lap. He's not coming in to hand over no. to, to Richelme. And right would, now, because of the clear air that Stefano Telli has got around him, I would imagine that Idi will keep him in as long as is possible. There's no reason to come in at this stage. Just you know, go out, stay what you're doing, and uh, just continue to increase that gap. Of course, the only reason to worry is if we have a safety car period during the pit stop window. In the meantime, Maxime Martin in the BMW, having just taken over from Dirk Muller, has set fastest overall sector time in the first sector. Obviously a personal best in the second sector, but again, we thought when Maxime Martin got in, it was an early pit stop, the first of the pit stoppers. Uh, and the reason was get him back on clear air and let him work his magic and try and get that BMW up into position where it is potentially able to challenge what is yet to be the, the, well, the leading Audi, which is yet to make its pit stop. Top four cars yet to come in. That's Stefan Ortelli in number three, Frank Stippler in the second of the WRT Audis in four. Kevin Estre just been mentioning in the 55 McLaren and Nicky Katzberg, but really throwing it around. Maxime Martin needs no second invitation. No, I mean, his first opening, his opening lap is a 127.7 against Stefan Ortelli's last lap of a 28.9. Or, or Telly's best lap of a 27.9. It was the fastest lap of the race so far. Well, that's a pretty good run on your opening lap for Maxim Martin. Bernd Schneider also in the Mercedes-Benz. Fastest time of anybody in the second sector. So interesting to see what the Mercedes... Ooh, very the late. Veteran, yes, very Kevin. late run into the pits for our race leader. There he goes, number three into the pit lane, waiting for that to be triggered. So, Stefan Richelme, his Monegasque teammate. They're both Monegasque. Will take over. Very strong opening stint, but it was untroubled. Yes, I'm not quite sure why Audi brought him in at this stage. Again, other than they're looking at the where do we get Raquelny back in? So, a young driver, principally from the single seater background, into a car being handed over by one of the most experienced GT or sports car WEC drivers in the world. And again, the Lamborghini an is in as well. Yeah, an outstanding job by uh, Stefan Ortelli. Yeah, but maybe they're just playing safe. He was sitting on an eight and a bit second lead. Let's not worry about any safety cars. Get the job done. Number three, down off the jacks. Waiting. Come on, Stefan. Get that it was a on. Bit of a second. Uh, uh, oh, three, four me. seconds. Not quite as sharp as getting the car rolling as it needed to be. That'll work to. Was he going to come out well, here? Well, here's the BMW. Yes. So he's. Um, Gained a bit of ground. No, he's lost a bit of ground in all that because it was about eight seconds, six and a half seconds before he came in from second place in 77. And Maxi Mata, that just shows how hard he's gone, plus the second loss by yes, I mean, Michelle Maxi Mata, not gear. Early pit stop for the car, fresh tyres, clear air, pressing as hard as he can. Now, Raquelny, who is a junior driver in the sense of he hasn't done an awful lot of GT racing, he will be feeling what the car is giving him. So this lap for Maxi Martin, what will be in effect when this, all the pit stops are cleared through, will be in second place. And he will be pushing Raquel Lee all the way to the chequered flag. Stip, Stipler goes on for another lap, so he has not pitted. So leading the race now, Frank Stipler by 3.4 seconds from Kevin Estra, who also hasn't pitted. So, but of those who have, Rochelle Lee leading, but being pushed very, very hard indeed. Enzo Eid running behind. Has Van Turner Tax has got it behind the car? Oh, uh, that was a little bit tight coming through turn eight. Yeah, that should be Christoph Mies who's just taken it over from Enzo. Yeah, still Nicky still Nicky Katzberg showing behind the wheel, but I would be surprised you said the Lamborghini came in, so it will be Von Turner Taxis behind the wheel now. Yeah, it takes a lap or so just to get you have to go around the second lap before the timing screen goes but leading the way is Frank Stippler we've just seen James Nash in the pits waiting to take over the number four Audi McLaren still battered and still going number 55 in second place Kevin Estra though the clock is ticking so he's only got this lap or perhaps the next one before he really has to come in I would think that they're going to be looking to both come in on this lap they would take a minute and 30 seconds off that would leave what 20 well just 24 but very close put it that way so are McLaren going to make it in as we see again the lead car Frank Stippler second place car behind this car the Mercedes-Benz driven by Ben Schneider 
Bernd Schneider's last lap was a 28.006, which is quicker than Stippler's last lap by a second. So the Audi's in an O and the McLaren just avoids clipping that white line, which marks the demarcation between the pit lane and uh, a penalty drive through. But I think he just about got away with that. Well, here's, here's a chance to just see fastest uh, opening sector of a lap. Maxime Martin, the man you picked out at the start of the weekend, John, car 77, really, really flying, effectively running in second place. Will there be a change here? Frank Stippler's just got out of number four, Audi in the pit lane, and James Nash with the blue flash on his helmet just got in to take over. Behind him is the GT Russian team car 71, but that had, be, had lost a lap effectively. Yeah. In the What's first going to be interesting is to see this gap here between Raquelny and Maxime Martin. You can see it's almost halved in the space of that lap. Martin's last lap was a 27.546 and uh, Raquel Lee's was a 28.7 so 1.2 seconds advantage to the BMW that's the effect of your first flying lap but the Mercedes has got between the two as it came out of the pit lane and that's going to be Maxime Martin cursing in his helmet so that, sh that should have Rochelle me into the lead of the race now Rob Bell on his way out of the pit lane and they battered, bruised and abused McLaren, that's about $100,000 worth of bodywork that's been trashed in the space of a millisecond. Yes, it's no longer a 650S, yes, it's about a 640. That's Probably. It. There he gets ahead. Just ahead of the oh, Ferrari. Indeed. Well, that was tight, and that's uh, Marco Seafried's taking that over after the pit stop. So, Rob Bell, it was tatty before I got it, sir, he'll tell them. And well, we can see that. It happened on lap one on the second turn. Totally innocent bystander, effectively. The track was blocked by the spinning Audi and the and poor Maxi Boots. Well, Not both Bentleys, in fact, got involved in that and only one of them has managed to return to the field that's Vansa Abril in that car he's in 11th place lapping in a 128.9 not good enough by the standards that we would have expected from the Bentley but it's the first race so first two cars coming around to complete the lap at the moment our timing screen say James Nash is leading the race we know he hasn't he isn't though because of course he was just making his pit stop at that time Three takes the lead again, top of the time sheets, that's Stefan Richelmi, but the gap, 1.8 seconds back to uh, Maxime Martin, who is really flying in the number 77 BMW. Yeah, the lap time, is, that time Raquelny got the advantage, that was because the, one of the two German, a uh, Russian entered Mercedes, got between the BMW and the leading Audi, and that's where Martin lost ground, and he lost ground by the sec of over 1.2 seconds, he was quicker on the opening lap, Stefano Telly just reporting to the team, but he also lost substantially, finding a way around that Mercedes, the second of the two Mercedes, and uh, he now is having to work to get that 1.8 seconds back to what it ought to be under a second. 9-11 really having a, a fraught time there with uh, Martin Rackinger, and he's fighting very hard with Marco Bonanomi and Audi, and <laughs> this, is, this is just how GT racing should be on an Easter weekend, John, and Audi clashing with, well, not clashing, bashing, right alongside with the with the Porsche but up front it's, it's Audi leading the way the WRT team with Stefan Richelby having taken over after that great opening stint yes there we see the battle for the lead and again Maxi Martin there was 1.2 seconds when they came across the line that's been reduced already just over halfway around the lap so let's wait and see what we're going to get from uh, Raquel as he comes across the line last lap a 28-2 Martin 28-7 I think it's going to be the other way around Martin has picked up 1.2 seconds was the gap as they 1.8 sorry as they came 1.3 so half a second advantage to Maxime Martin so now let's see this battle for the lead of the race looking on board we can see what Maxime Martin can see not much of a, of a lead there for Stefan Michelby Stefan single seater racing for a long time drifted a little bit wide there yeah. so already he's starting to feel the pressure he's trying to settle in he already had a bad start. John, what's happening? Well, we've got McKelney trying to not make a mistake, probably maybe pushing a little bit too hard and forcing the front of the car in turn four to, to run that little bit too wide, but hasn't recovered back out of turn five and through turn six. So the BMW, you can see the gap not really changing a great deal. It's going to change under braking, obviously, because the BMW is braking later, so the gap, but then the seesaw effect. But through these corners, seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11, and 12, that's, I think, where Maxime Martin can close down the Audi, and he's got to get really as close as he can to the Audi. He's not going to make it past in a straight line. It's going to come probably as a, a major lunge down the inside and any one of these corners on the return to the pits, or possibly, and it'll be very brave to do it, somewhere around turn three or four. Yeah, just looking down at turn seven there, John, Richelme was a little bit tatty 
as he tried to complete the braking and turn in. Drove better through the remaining corners of the lap. He's just coming up to the final corner, turn 14. Gap last time, one point, let's call it 1.4 seconds as close as. It doesn't look as though it's actually close a great deal. 1.2 seconds, he took just over a tenth of a second, but it will be relentless, and I do feel he'll be putting the pressure on so hard that Richelme will be the one that cracks. But I've been watching the BMW come through turn one, sorry, turn two. Clearly the BMW's got a lot of grip. He's able to pick his line. We can see him spotting those curbs on the on the apex better than Raquel Lee can do on the Audi. He's also using slight, the curbs a bit more. Well, he's just he's he's got that little bit more bite all around the racetrack. Where it's all going to go sort of slightly static is here on the straight. Audi has got good straight line performance. That V10 engine from Munich has got a lot of you know what do you want to call them German horsepower. BMW's V8 has got sort of similar horsepower, but is a fractionally a more draggy car. So its benefit will come in these twistier parts of the circuit. As Albert von Turner Taxis is getting the attention of Rob Bell in the substantially damaged McLaren. Rob Bell looking to go high and then drop down and get on the gas and get the thrust off turn five, then through six onto the main straight. And Marco Seyfried sitting in behind in the 3-3-3 Ferrari. He could yet uh, gain if he can get onto their tail, but you do feel that Rob Bell will be starting to become that little bit frustrated. And you do wonder, oh, another passing move, and that's uh, Ragic, not Ragic, uh, being pushed back. That's, that's the Marcel Wagner being passed by Vincent Abril. Yeah, so Abril has gotten through the Porsche. Another very, very aggressive defence now as the Porsche attempts to come back. We know the Porsche's got good straight But who's speed. in that yellow in yellow Mercedes? It's Bernd Schneider, who's been setting purple times. And uh, he was setting fastest lap times, or, or sector of lap times. He'll be really, really pushing. And now Marcel Wagner in the, in the Porsche, the least experienced by a long way of this trio. Yeah. And, and Bernd Schneider will be all over him, like under somebody's arm. Oh, Von Turner Taxis. That's Albert Von Turner Taxis. He was the fifth couple. under big pressure from Rob Bell. Are we going to get a safety car or not? Because they're going to have to remove that car. I don't think, I don't think he'll be able to drive it out of the gravel. So will we see a safety car intervention? which will, of course, have a bearing on the outcome of this race. Well, he was under huge pressure from Rob Bell in the McLaren. Number 55, but uh, he's cracked. But the important thing is the pit window has passed. That was five minutes sure. ago. Close. No one's going to be caught out without no. pitting. Will it interrupt the lead battle, though? 1.4 seconds. Well, we've got 20, just leads. under 20 minutes remaining. We've got a car off at turn 12. It's beached in the gravel as you come down the hill. Here's Maxime Martin really, really pressing now. It was 1.4 seconds. Is he closer? I think he's edging back in again. He, he needs to be careful going through that yellow flag zone not to improve on and his previous time because should he do that, that will not be looked upon friendly by the stewards. And as we could see there, John, just in that shot as he chased after uh, the car ahead of him is the fact that uh, Von Turner attacks his crash coming past the old pits. He'd come out of turn 12, yep. got it wrong. He's quite some way off to the left. Mercedes, probably, we saw the Porsche pass the Mercedes before the round of pit stops. Bernd Schneider's going to put it down the inside. He's going to be late in the brakes, but he has to get off it again. I, th I thought Schneider had that done and dusted, but good job. The Porsche maintained it. He was on the outside, could break. He could break that little bit later and, and not be compromised. And he did it, and he did it successfully. That, that was one of those moments where you thought your, safe money, your money was safe with him. Didn't Absolutely. happen this time around. But again, the most important thing was there was no contact. Now, again, look how close Schneider has got to the tail of the Porsche. And, uh, they still wave yellow flags down at turn 12. The car is still in that precarious position. I just want safety, safety car. car. I thought it might be deployed. And, uh, OK, just remember, remember these numbers. 1.2 seconds between first and second when the safety car was called. It won't be much more when they're released, but Maxime Martin will then know that he can attack from right under the tail. Well, we have the replay. And this, oh, oh, was, was that assisted or not? I can't tell. Did Rob Bell clip him? We can't tell because, of course, the bodywork has been missing since lap it, one, it turn had, two. It had, had hints that it was an assist. Difficult to tell. So back to... Well, we'll have to wait until after the race, perhaps, to find out whether there was contact between the two, because it was hidden by yeah. the old pitbull. Oh, here's another chance to look at it again. Here comes the Lamborghini any second. Now, already sideways. Uh, I think it was, I think it was I, self induced. I think so, too. So he took himself round. Rob Bell probably had to stand on the brakes just what where he wanted to. What we didn't see, actually, was was there any help before. before it came into view? That's the thing we can't tell. And we don't have a camera to look up to that. So there could have been a little bit of assist under braking because. It would take so little to destabilise the back of a car when it's nose down, under braking, and about to enter the corner. 
Well, we'll never know until after the race we can find out because it was hidden. But yeah. the tail of that Lamborghini was coming round quite a lot. So yeah. I mean, it, it is possible that maybe there's a, a the very lightest of contact, and that's more than enough. You can see Hans Ryder; he's not happy about it. I think he's. In, I think Albert von Turnen and Taxes are saying, "I got hit from behind," and there's the face of the owner of the Ryder team, and a lot of frustration showing. So the yes. car is now going to be towed clear. And we can't uh, see the corner that could have been hit. That's no, hit we, just we, around we, the far we didn't side. We have that view available. So it's possible My, there might have been slight I, contact. I, th I think he was probably hit. And we're just hearing that Albert has told uh, well, Team's boss that he, well, he would say that. But I would think if he was going to spin it, he'd have started spinning a bit further up towards the exit of the bend. I think, the, I, I think Hans uh, Reiter's face, the frustration on his face, summed up what had occurred we had to second guess it until we got that confirmation and albert von albert von turner texas has confirmed or through the pit lane through the pit uh, garage that he was attacked no not attacked that's too strong he was tapped, tapped potentially a, a tap at the rear but it was at the most critical point of the entry into a corner and just nose down tail up it takes very little and all of a sudden the back's gone and there he is sailing backwards into the gravel so safety car has been deployed safety car is deployed here's a little vignette for you Bert Schneider is down in 11th place while the safety car is running we have just over a quarter of an hour remaining in this race he has the potential to pick off a fair few but he has to get up to sixth place even to get a point and of course finishing position not just for points but also starting position for tomorrow's race so he's really, really got to see what he can do to pick it up. I mean, it's, a, it's an enormous ask from 11th to 6th to get past five cars, albeit they will all be in a line of cars. It's, it really is up to the pit lane to advise their drivers as to the point the safety car will be withdrawn and to ensure, I mean, people like Ben Schneider have done this a hundred thousands of times, so they are, all, they are aware of what the likely scenario is going to be, but there's still a long way back and it's about trying to get the momentum and you are meant to run all these cars are running at approximately 80 kilometers per hour one behind the other and they're required to keep some kind of continuity of distance it's not quite a delta system we don't have gps plotting on any of these cars we don't have the circuits wired to to deal with all that level of technology but everybody has been told 80 kilometers per hour keep station don't drop back or don't run it's trying to bring some control into these safety car uh, deployments. Safety car, we're being told, is coming in this lap and there's been fantastic race, racing a bit too much drama on the opening lap, but uh, look at the tail. Well, there's the Mercedes just ahead of just, the BMW. Uh, just behind the Porsche there. And so he's going to have a chance, but again, it depends. Once the flag is with, once the safety car is withdrawn, then you're just going to get on with it. Now, this morning, it seemed the curse was on, on the uh, Team WRT. Three of their four cars were involved. One of them didn't get to start the race, but the remaining three are running first, third, and fourth, somehow coming back their way. So, Rochelle Me starting uh, when the safety car goes in at the end of this lap, just ahead of the BMW of Maxime Mata. Ah, the Lamborghini has made it back to the pits, so perhaps Albert can reiterate what he's passed yes, through the Yes, I mean, I don't know whether he wants to try and, with what, 13, 14 minutes of the race remaining whether they will uh, attempt to get the car back in again. They might wish to do that just to ensure that there isn't any ancillary damage that they haven't spotted just with a quick cursory check around the car. Uh, the key corner is the far side at the back to see if he's yeah. had any There's not a lot of white paint. haste to check out whether this is going to be a car that will go back in or not or whether Albert feels... Well... It's so, Stefan... Stefan Rochelmi will be leading away the restart. The lights are out on the Audi. And of course, Rochelmi's wise. He's hung back, but look right under his tail. And importantly, behind the BMW that's sitting behind him is a car that's a lap down, which is the number 70, 71 with uh, Mercedes with Alexei Vasiliev. He will provide a buffer for this too, so, so they can escape from James Nash. And here we go, the restart. That Mercedes is in the way. What a great exit there from Stefan Richelby. Used the curb not too much, and Maxime Martin just cannot close him down as they go down to turn one. This time, let's see if the field can get through. OK, a restart, not the real start, but there, a good job done by Richelby. Yeah, I've watched the BMW. Maxime Martin is able to really as spot those apexes with more success than we're seeing Stefan Richelby do. The BMW is still showing that little bit more bite and grip in these tight corners. Now, he's got to be glued under that rear wing. 
as they come through turn five then the sweep through six out of the back straight but the ID on the gas that little bit earlier and again uses the advantage that the ID have got in terms of straight line performance Maxime Martin is going to have essentially this lap he's got to keep contact he's got to keep the pressure on the, the young Monogast driver to ensure that he's got any chance of getting under the top step of the podium closes down again into the slower part of the track in seven to watch through eight yeah no, certainly Michelle be very twitchy all the time down into the end of the back straight into turn seven but he did enough to make sure that was Absolutely. rebuffed for the lap that's all he had to do now he can get his head down and see how much he settled it wasn't a long safety car period they shouldn't have lost too much tar heat but look how much they've been held by uh, Vasiliev, Alexei Vasiliev holding back the cars in third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. Well, I mean, it's going to be frustrating for everybody. Third, fourth, fifth, you know, uh, what do you call them, uh, Christopher Mace. So the Mercedes has got that little bit of squirt in the straight line. Rob Bell directly behind with a very heavily damaged McLaren. He'll be looking to seek some advantage through. He's gained a place. In and fact, he's what's he doing? He's trying to pull up alongside the Audi. He's done it. He's He's passed two on this restart lap alone. He's part, first he passed Christopher Mees, now he's just got past James Nash, so a really strong restart lap. He's got to try and get past Alexei Vasiliev in the Mercedes, but he's done the hard work, Rob Bell, to get up to absolutely, third place. Absolutely good driving. And, uh, and the McLaren showing, in spite of the damage, good pace. Again, Mercedes can hold the whole field back. There's the battle for the lead. Maxi Martin taking a slightly different angle to try and get a straighter drive off. Turn five, there he is. He's marginally, well, it's roughly the same, I would say, first lap after the safety car restart. Maybe fractionally closer. Not close enough to make a dive down the inside, but uh, again, just applying pressure. Just over 10 minutes of this race remaining. I said just during the safety car period, watch for Bert Schneider. He picked off Marcel Wagner on that lap. He's just trying to pick off Vincent Abril. There he is going around the outside. I think he's just about got enough to get up the inside. No, he hasn't. Turn eight. Abril drove very well there to hold the Bentley ahead of the Mercedes, but the Mercedes absolutely flying with Bert Schneider. Oh, a big twitch there as they go through turn nine. Yeah, I mean, that's just because he had on the throttle, caught the, the edge of the curb and flicked the back of the Mercedes out. But, but here's this battle still for the lead under a second between first and second. A lot closer this time. It was 0.7 of a second. Oh, gosh, the battle, scar, battle scars from lap one for the 71 Mercedes holding up that group behind him and Rob Bell will be desperate. Gate two places on the first lap of the restart. Now he's being blocked by the Mercedes. What's the gap? First to second, identical, 0.7 of a second. James Nash attacking back in number four Audi to see if he can get past the tattered McLaren, but Rob Bell does enough to keep the back. Will try and get past Alexei Vasiliev, but uh, cannot manage it down through turn two. Well, I think Rob Bell is going to use everything he's got on the, in the bin to try and get alongside into turn four. He goes down the inside. And Mies just made the move there, inside yes. Nash into fourth place. Good job. trouble is they get onto the back straight and they hope to have the speed to get past the Mercedes the, the tattered 71 but they just can't manage it so very frustrating for Rob Bell first and second uh, Stefan Richelmi and uh, Maxime Martin pulling ever further clear now well the gap is three quarters of a second first to second but almost six seconds between third and fourth place and again the Mercedes comfortably as the Audi is being challenged by the Ferrari down Sh the Sh Schneider has got past uh, Vincent Abril there you can see the yellow Mercedes has now got past uh, number 84 Bentley that's had such a, a tricky race, punted off at the second corner, fought back with Maxi Buch and now demoted by number, number 70, that's Bert Schneider. Mercedes through and through. So, the Sperifico twins picking up the tail of this field as we go back to the battle. That's three quarters of a second, wherever you look at it. Mercedes has been now overtaken, McLaren Rob Bell has done the business, got clear, and that's going to allow him an opportunity. He's fought six or two seconds behind third place behind second place because the, Mercedes, the McLaren now up into third place yeah but he lost a fair bit of time there because he lost a ton of time so another second on the leading leading duo eight and a bit minutes remaining but Schneider continuing to attack and certainly continuing at to attack is Maxime Martin just under 0.7 of a second running a little bit wide there in his chase but as we've seen lap after lap when they go through turn five the Audi starts to put the power down as Stefan Richelmi can lead him onto that back straight and get just far enough clear from him Yep. Eight minutes remaining, it's going to have to be a really brave attack well, uh, from Maxime Martin. It's going to be something that out of the control of Stefan Rakelny if he was to lose this lead. And he's been under pressure since he got behind the wheel of this car some ten or so minutes ago, of which the number of minutes have been behind a safety car. Maxime Martin has been on these tyres longer in second place than the lead car Rakelny has been on uh, on his set of tyres. So that may also bring 
a small amount of bearing as we watch Rob Bell what's going on down at turn seven no I think that's that's, uh, that's Vlasic that's 54 that's, that's, that's the, the sister car, the sister car. Yes. That, yes. that needs to slide out of the way if it possibly can because there's Bert Schneider right under his tail or with Marco Bonanomi just in front of him in 75 Audi nose to tail this is spring sunshine Nagaro fantastic GT racing what a way to get going with the Blanc Pan GT series and of course the world the heart of, uh, of uh, what do I call it stuff Armagnac uh, no well, Armagnac is one of the things the other thing of course foie gras and everybody so far is foie gras out I'm not right one second between first and second so a better lap that time around for uh, Stefan Richelmi so he is starting to respond to the challenge from behind clock is ticking down six minutes 45 seconds remaining can Rob well Rob Bell close in in the 55 McLaren no he lost a little bit last time around so one second between first and second if you're looking at number four that is James Nash down in fifth place he was demoted a couple of laps ago by his Audi teammate Christopher Mees in number two but nose to tail in the final few laps of this race, this season opener for the Blanc Pan series. We have the feature race tomorrow, Easter Monday, but look at this battling. Sets the hearts singing, and you can see number four being pushed very hard indeed. That's James Nash by Marco Siegfried in the 3-3-3 Ferrari, and uh, Anders Fjordback right in the thick of the battle as well. The sister car with uh, Philippe Sa uh, Marco Bonanomi just one place further behind him. Bert Schneider in the bright yellow, Mercedes in the background also trying to pick them off points only to the top six runners that at the moment goes down to the green Ferrari there Marcus Seyfried claiming the final point but uh, will the order stay like this right now he's got the two ISR Audis right on his tail the McLaren in the mix there is not the one at the front end of the race but it's Philippe Vlasic in the Pro-Am Cup entry number 54 there it is and being chased very hard by Bert Schneider and now Vincent Abril is able to close right back in in the 84 Bentley so the order is ebbing and flowing but uh, Bert Schneider continues to attack in that bright yellow Mercedes interestingly the last few laps race just over five minutes remaining and it looked as though Maxime Martin who was so strong he said the fastest lap of the race on his first flying lap out of the pits he was closing right in on Rochelle he got down to just over half a second behind him and now it's out to 1.2 seconds so Rochelle really responding to the challenge from 77 so it's Audi BMW, McLaren, Audi, Audi, Ferrari, they are the top six runners. Riding, looking forward from uh, the car in 10th place, that's Vincent Abril's Bentley as he chases after Marco, after Bernd Schneider's bright yellow Mercedes, which is just getting past Philippe Vlasic's, or lapping Philippe Vlasic's car down the back straight, the McLaren pushed back a position, but it's four. Now James Nash being pushed very hard indeed by Marco Siegfried. The green Ferrari looking left, looking right going through the twisters around the back part of the circuit towards the old pits and Anders Fjordback uh, right in behind in number 74 being chased by his team teammate Marco Bonanomi who's diving up the inside there you go uh, going around the end of the old control tower the old, passing the old pits now they all have to try and get past the very tattered 71 Mercedes but it could be a moment like this where oh the order changes and being pushed wide has he got a puncture there or was that just going in too deep but James Nash runs wide onto the dusty stuff could be a puncture it is a puncture into the pit so very bad luck for James Nash there everyone else moves up a position so so that's out of the uh, the, the point scoring drives and now what we're seeing is uh, Christopher Mees going up the inside he's hunted down the McLaren for third position and Rob Bell wasn't able to resist him looked as though he had third place in the bag but perhaps that early damage early race damage now looks like he's perhaps even cruising in looks so so in the space of about 30 seconds we've had the car from uh, the top six which is number number four get a puncture and then a slowing McLaren was caught and passed by Christopher Meese so we now have the three Audi leading the race no the McLaren is still going but uh, well that's interesting He's dropped back a very long way. So Stefan Richelby leading by 1.2 seconds from the 77 BMW of Maxime Martin. Rob Bell was third, but now it's Christopher Mees in the two Audi up into third position. And Marco Siegfried should be moving up to fourth. Oh, and off the track. So maybe he too has a puncture. We've seen Rob Bell slow. He's letting the others pass. The car that's just gone past him is Bernd Schneider. So he's lost about four or five places. Can't see if it's sitting low on one side, but he's cruising back to the pit so what was a great recovery drive by Kevin Estra and now Rob Bell looks as though they're going to go home empty-handed 
And there's Vincent Abril with the onboard camera and Bentley number 84 diving inside him uh, around the end of the old pit lane, being followed by Ricardo Spirafico in the number zero. BMW getting right in on the act again and I think we will see coming into the pits no he's going on only two and a bit minutes remaining in the race and Rob Bell is carrying on he doesn't see any point in pitting and the next driver to attack him will be Marcel Wagner in the 911 Porsche 911 gap between first and second almost identical lap times came down very slightly Maxime Martin 1.1 seconds down and I think he's closing in it's going to be nervous times down in the uh, bit the uh, Team WRT pit for Stefan Ortelli who started the race in pole position kept him out of trouble led all the way came into the, make his pit stop handed over Stefan Richelmi and now being caught hand over fish oh yes he is nervous let's check those fingernails Stefan because his uh, teammates and fellow Monegas Stefan Richelmi holding on in the front of the race but Maxime Matta 1.1 seconds down last time way less than that half of that one and a half minutes until the chequered flag is coming out so it should be one more lap and then one more beyond that for this duo coming down there turn 11 turn 12 and it's it's way less than a second now it's probably less than half a second has he left this attack too late it looked as though Richelmi had started to eat clear but certainly the gap is down to next to nothing 0 0.6 0 0.7 perhaps as they start this lap 0.684 of a second Wow, this is the seat to be in on this lap. This is the chasing car. This is Maxime Martin, the Belgian driver. Oh, and another slip and a slide from Stefan Richelmi, understeering out of turn two. Those, that's a thousand mile stare from the pit lane there from Stefan Ortelli. Can his country, fellow countryman and teammate, uh, Stefan Richelmi, hold off Maxime Martin's charge? And he's new, don't forget. Stefan Richelmi is a single seater driver through and through. And here he is in GT racing this is the last lap of the race I think he is, he's done enough to get to to stay to stay ahead uh, let's see this is the vital corner coming down into turn seven the end of the back straight for the final time Maxime Martin can't get close enough to make a dive has Richelme done enough goes through the kink at turn eight he's got the double left-handers nine and ten where can he attack he's almost running out of positions they go through turn ten they've got turn elevens and twelve just around the back of the old pits he's not close enough to make a lunge we have seen some contact down there before not that I expect Martin to get close enough to, or even to think about doing it down through 11 down through 12 just past where the Lamborghini spun off now they just have the right hander and the left hander to complete the lap it's going to be next to nothing one two car lengths between them but I think the first blood of the 2015 Blancpain GT Sprint Series will go to Audi and Stefan Richelmi and his teammate Stefan Ortelli chased so hard to the line 0.552 of a second was the gap at the end so delight there a smile from Lawrence Van Tour didn't get to start the race in the number one sister car but he's delighted on behalf of the driver in the middle there Stefan Ortelli the dark hair deep set eyes and the big smile who's going to come home in third place it's Christopher Mies and Marco Seyfried just makes it into fourth ahead of Bernd Schneider and Marco Bonanomi so what a charge by the yellow Mercedes and the green Ferrari well what a fabulous start to the season half a second between that car that you see on your screens he's actually been passed off the checkered flag by Maxime Martin who drove such a strong race in the 77 BMW but for team WRT the Belgian Audi Club entered car what a start to the season of course that was the qualifying race the main race is tomorrow Easter Monday so a great deal of happiness there for the number three crew they've also put down that first marker against their highly fancy teammates of uh, Lawrence Van Tour so strong last year and new GT racer Robin Freitz who didn't get to start the race after damage suffered this morning when Robin Freitz clouted the end of the pit wall after a turn out of the spin out of the final corner but uh, cruising in job very well done the poly motel sponsored number three Audi they will be very pleased indeed that wasn't a win that came easily yes the safety car chopped into their lead when Stefan Ortelli was leading the way but safety cars are a factor of racing and uh, you have to have to do what you can when you can a huge charge from Maxime Martin after a strong start from Dirk Muller in the 77 BMW but the combination of Ortelli and the driver who brought it home Stefan Richelmi did just enough and I mean just enough to take the first victory of 2015. Conditions fair, particularly if you're in the race leading car, but uh, the 77 crew can feel they did a good job too. Dirk Muller 
and the driver who brought it home, Maxime Martin, third place, Christopher Mies and Enzo E. They had a really quiet race compared to, to everybody else, but did just enough. They should have been chased home by the sister car of number four, James Nash, but a puncture dropped them out of position. And there's Stefan Richelmi. Yes, I think he's enjoyed his afternoon's racing. Come on, let's pop, pop. Want to see his helmet come off, see the big smile because he did a few few races last year, but he's still relatively fresh to for after his long career in uh, single seaters. Stefan Richelmi looking very happy indeed. Let's hear what he has to say. Stefan, congratulations. How difficult was that towards the end? Always under pressure for Maxime Martin. Uh, it was really good, but uh, for sure Max uh, applied a big pressure on me. It's my ex-teammate, so it's really good to fight uh, together. And uh, hopefully Steph did a really good job in the first hint. It allowed me to have uh, some uh, margin, but uh, after the safety car, I have really to, to push as much as I can. I managed a little gap, and just in the two last lap, I was a bit struggling. I still have a lot to, 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 to understand, but I'm really happy with this result. Well, you've got, you've got a great teammate with Stefan Rotelli. He seems to be training up all you young guys to come along and be his teammate. Yeah, I did an amazing job with uh, Lawrence two years ago, and now he's, uh, he's sharing everything with me. I'm really happy for this. And uh, moreover, we are friends, and uh, both from Monaco, so we'll push hard this season. And all the better for tomorrow, starting in pole position. Uh, I mean, I have to do my job and uh, just uh, be, uh, increase the gap until the first pit, and we'll see. Well done, Stefan. Congratulations. Well, very good to hear there from Stefan Richelmi. Job well done. <coughs> Wonderful, warm spring afternoon after a grey morning here at Nagaro and the 2015 Grand Pan Sprint Series is underway. What a cracker it was. And we're going to have another few interviews for you. Who should we send down there? Let's try John Watson. Good job. This is happy days for Brazil. Yeah. Almost happy. Tomorrow will be better. Well, tell me, <laughs> Dirk, I mean, a, a very good opening stint, but you came in very early. Any reason for that? No, there was absolutely no reason. I mean, uh, we were catching traffic and um, the team did the perfect uh, decision just to bring me in. I think I could have done two, two more laps, that's for sure, but um, I, that was just tactics because we were coming into traffic and um, so that's why we decided. Maxime did a good job. Thanks a lot to the team. Well, Maxime Martin coming in here. You had a, an enviable task, you chased the Audi all the way through, the, behind the safety car as well. Was that your best chance to get past the leading Audi? Yeah, I think uh, they were a bit, a bit, a bit stronger than us today. Um, so, but at the end it was a good fight and uh, we finished quite close, so we'll do our best for winning tomorrow. Uh, I saw you come up and congratulate Stefan and Raquel me on a good drive. It sounds like you were impressed with what he did in the Audi. Yeah, he was, he was really quick and didn't, didn't do any mistakes, so it was difficult to <laughs> to catch him, but uh, no, it's good, like, looking forward to, to for tomorrow. So tell me, what's it like to be in a sunny BMW as opposed to a Munich BMW, a nice bright Brazilian BMW? Yeah, that's lovely. I mean, I was um, I was having the honor to, to drive the art car in Le Mans, so that was the only time I was not driving a white one. But um, no, it's cool. I mean, I like I love the colors um, and, you know, the whole team is so friendly. They are so professional, uh, really high level. And, um, you know, they were welcoming uh, Maxime and myself really nice and uh, pushed from the beginning. And uh, well, so far so good. We are running uh, really good. We were P2 um, in qualifying this morning, now P2. So I think we need to work a little bit tonight and uh, we want to catch the victory, that's for sure. Well, you're on the front row again for tomorrow's race. That's your best chance. Absolutely, it's the best chance. I mean, we see uh, if you're running in clean air, we are really, really strong. And um, so, but we are pushing. So it's, um, I'm happy to be back here. Uh, I think that was my first Blancpain race um, and um, I really enjoyed it. Well done, thanks, Doug. Good to hear from the, the duo that chased so hard. That's Maxime Martin and Dirk Muller. And they've now got to rush around the corner, walk up the stairs and go to the first podium of the season. So just to reiterate, if you just come in, missed a fantastic qualifying race. Stefan Richelmi and Stefan Ortelli won for the number three Audi. Dirk Muller and Maxime Martin second in the 77 BMW. Then Christopher Meese and Enzo Eid, a quiet race, but they worked their way through to take the final podium position, moving up the order in the final few laps. So Audi, BMW and Audi take the first blood here at Nagaro. Going 
going to have an interview now with Vincent Voss of Team WRT. Team Principal of WRT, Vincent Voss. A day of almost mixed emotions, a great victory today, but real disappointment for your number one car. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the, the incident we have this morning in qualifying uh, make us withdraw from the weekend. And, uh, well, we had also the car number four who, uh, without the safety car, could have finished on the podium and then uh, had a slow puncture at the end. Yeah, it's unfortunate for the team, but at the end we have two cars on the podium, which is already uh, an extra job from the team. Now Vincent, you're bringing along all these young single-seater drivers. Is that the future of GT racing, or is it just your way of doing it? I think it is the future of the young. Uh, well, I think they have a great thing to do in GT racing. At the moment, GT racing is growing a lot, and uh, I think there is a big future, a bright future for them in the GT. But I tell you what, the old boys still get it done. Stefano Telli, I mean, great, great opening stint. Well, when you see the young guys uh, and the old guys, like see Ben Schneider and Stefano Telli, they did a, a great job. And it's nice to see them on track doing uh, such a great thing. Vincent, thank you very much. Well done. So let's now travel up and take a look at the podium after a cracking first race. Just having a look at the drivers, they've worked their way up into the into the green room behind the podium, and uh, it was Audi from BMW and Audi hope to gra grab the results, and here they come. So it was Raquel Mian Ortelli winning in the number three Audis, then Maxime Martin and Dirk Muller second in the BMW, Christopher Mead, Enzo Ide third for Audi, Marco Siegfried, Norbert Siegler worked up to fourth for Ferrari, then Bert Schneider from the back with Alexei Karachev takes fifth for Mercedes. The ISR Audis come sixth and seventh. Vincent, Abril and Maxi Bouc involved in the first corner action up to eighth. And here now is the podium ceremony. Ortelli first onto the top step and Stefan Richelme right alongside him. Joined by the BMW racers, Dirk Muller there, and behind him, Maxime Martin, very good chase led by them. And then Christopher Mies, there he is, shaking hands, and Enzo Ide going past, congratulating his teammate there, Stefan Ortelli. And there are the Fjordback brothers, Anders and Thomas, going up as well onto the podium after running up as into seventh place. Great job by those two Danish racers in the Silver Cup. So the national anthems played there for the winning duo of Stefan Ortelli and Stefan Richelmi, who weathered the storm, John Watson. Yeah, I mean, they, they did a great job, principally Stefan Ortelli getting off the line cleanly and getting the advantage. And then a good, I mean, a good stint by Stefan Richelmi, who was under more pressure in his stint than the more experienced Stefan Ortelli, and particularly from Maxi Martin, who we know is an outstanding driver in a BMW. But as Dirk Muller said, and we sort of alluded to in the broadcast, Muller came in that little bit early to get track position and get Marta out and let him use the strengths of the BMW Pirelli tyres and try and get position to eventually get into the lead in the overlap during the pit stops. Didn't quite happen, but a great battle and the appreciation I saw down in the Parc Ferme of Marta and Raquelny. He enjoyed that battle, really a good battle between two young drivers. Raquelny coming from single-seaters, Marta, who has been now more GT-based for a number of years. Yeah, it's always great to see that sort of camaraderie because they know they're 
all trying to travel a similar path, but it doesn't mean you have to be offensive to each other or bear grudges. But it was really, you might have done, John, well, but it's, it's were, kept it clear. Yes, I mean, there was a lot of feisty driving out there. I mean, you know, you think after a long winter off and, OK, that had a bit of testing done at Paul Ricard and some in Mazzano and Italy, they might have got all that sort of dirty water off their chest. But as soon as they see a car, they want to attack it. But, of course, by doing so, all you do is damage your own chances and, of course, the car that you might come into contact to. And we did see that incident up in turn one. Took out Max Book initially in the second of the Bentleys. Other cars were damaged. I mean, Marcus Winkelhock normally bulletproof when it comes to diving and an Audi just was the guilty party probably for this particular instance. Great drives through the field. Kevin Estra, Rob Bell and the McLaren. Disappointment that they didn't get a, a podium. James Nash, as I was walking down to the park from a drives in with a left rear tyre deflating. Where did all, I missed all this when I was walking down. They just waited until he left the booth, John, and did it. Good to see the Fjord back brothers finishing seventh overall. Young Danes, they win the Silver Cup class. They kept out of trouble. The key is always keeping out of trouble. If you do so, you have got a chance of picking up good points, or in this case, in the Pro Am Cup, getting your due rewards. And I wonder, is that a lovely bottle of Armagnac? You get a lot of gifts, Dan. Look at the trophies. I never got a trophy like that in my life. Time for a comeback, John. Oh, well, I've never stopped, have I? Oh, of course. But, so, first blood. This is Easter Sunday. Easter Monday. Bigger and even better. Well, we're going to see it. This, this, it's the key, again, is going to be off the start, the rolling start, into turn one. You're on the pole position is going to be Raquel May and Otelli, and you've got Marta, Ma Maxime Martin and Dirk Muller. They know their best chance of getting, this, getting a victory uh, in the main race on Sunday is to get ahead of the Audi at the earliest convenience, and that's got to be into turn one and turn two. So I expect to see a fairly aggressive start from both those drivers. Well, let's just hope it's not quite as aggressive into turn two. That shook up the race, well, but it, it was a big shame. Marcus Spinkelhock tipping Maxi Boots Bentley round. But it led to plenty of comebacks. Yeah, and I mean, further, I mean, the Nissan, Tom Walton, Sean, Craig Dolby, they also got tagged or fairly heavily hit from behind. So we never got to see the pace of the, of the Nissan, which would have been a strong midfield finisher. Stefan Richelme led away from pole position. The BMW tucked in behind, but the problem was to come when they got out of turn one into turn two. All looking good so far, but just wait, hold on to your hats. Suddenly, round goes Marcus Finkelhock. He hits the 84 Bentley, which is clouded by the sister Bentley, off into the gravel. The first few have pulled clear. You can see huge amount of damage to the bodywork of Kevin Estra's McLaren there, holding off, perhaps pushing off Nick Katzberg in the Lamborghini. Not to impress teammate Albert von Turnen Taxis, but one of the cars on the charge early on, kicking up the things, the markers, the edge of the circuit was the 333 Ferrari. Yeah, Martin Martin getting ready for the driver change. And then, of course, this is the battle that was going on for the lead all the way through the, the second part of the race. The safety car intervention, of course, brought everybody the field together. But Bernd Schneider in the, behind the wheel of the Mercedes SLS inevitably was making progress. Yes, and also the 84 Bentley riding on board with that at the moment. This is Vincent Abril picking his way back up the order. We got to the round of pit stops. And there is number three coming in from the lead. The lead had been compressed. And Stefan Ortelli handing the car over to Stefan Richelme. But it's all a question. Look at the gap there. It was about six and a bit seconds, but already Maxime Martin was on the charge. He got taken it over a lap or two earlier, and he really started to close in. He got far closer. Yeah, I mean, and all through the field there, we saw what we, we didn't realise at the time, but subsequently turned out to be a mild attack of contact. Uh, you don't get it in the NHS, you get a pill for it, but there was a little bit of contact and Ryan went Albert von Trunnen Taxis. And out came the safety car, but the key was the release after the safety car period and Stefan Richelme absolutely nailed it through turn 14 and got Maxime Martin off his tail. And then number two, Christophe Mies started to pick his way up the order, delayed there by the Mercedes of Alexei, Kar of, uh, Alexei Vasiliev. And look how the field of cars was bunched up behind them. Yeah, that, to tell. That's, that's the effect, in fact, of the, uh, the whole safety car intervention. So up the inside, and there's the left rear puncture on James Nash. Now, where did he get that? We weren't quite certain. It was a slow puncture by all accounts. It ruined his race. He was up to fourth, fifth position. And then that benefited uh, the car behind the Ferrari, but Stefan Ortelli had to chew his nails to the quick because he, he knew that Stefan Richelme had to hang on. Closing in, Maxime Martin, how close could he get? 
half a second was the eventual answer.